Welcome back. You are watching DXB today. We're talking about gut health, and I can tell you that we've gotten all of us here to know each other much better than we ever anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> and we're about to do a lot more of that. Our next guest is a homeopathic practitioner committed to offering insights in the field of health and wellness. Please welcome Dr. Sean Penny from the Wellness Brothers. Hi, Doc. Hi, how Thanks are you? Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for the invitation. Okay, well, we're talking about gut health. Let's just start from the beginning. What are a few of the things that we can do today to improve our gut health? Well, obviously it's gonna start with nutrition. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's the most important thing that you can be doing. And uh, fiber is probably one of the most important things you should be consuming and a wide variety of it. I think too many people eat processed foods, too much sugars, uh, too much GMO foods. And a simple thing you can do is literally increase the, the, the variety of your fruits and vegetables, making sure that you are getting that variety. But there's things that you can do outside of nutrition. Um, there's been research to show that sleeping, the right amount of hours and the right times each evening. Or, you know, you talk about going to bed. Some people go to bed at eight o'clock and then 10 o'clock. If you go to bed at the same time, there's been shown to be a difference in the person's microbiome. So sleeping time as well as consistency. Exercise has been shown to have an impact on the microbiome, which is the, the whole diversity of the flora within the gut. Those are basic principles that one can follow right now, things that you can change now without taking any supplementation or doing any tests that will create a vast difference to your gut health. Well, we were talking just a little bit ago about uh, gut manipulation. I was wondering if uh, you might want to weigh in on that because Mary was discussing it with us a little bit. Gut manipulation, do you think it is the future? I think so. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the, the, the future, but it's one of the, the, the aspects that um, is going to change uh, gut issues in the future. It's one of the things. I don't think it's the, you know, it's the be all and end all. Uh, it's not something that I have studied extensively, but I do certainly think there's a place for it. Yeah, Sean, I, I mean, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. The first is when, we, when you spoke about supplementation, what kind of supplements can we take every day? Dina touched on probiotics. That is something that is a staple in, in my morning. Is there anything else that we can expand on? Well, let me just say on pro probiotics, I think you'll be cautious of taking the same probiotic all, all the time. Okay. So that's something you've got to be aware of. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if it applies here, but I know that there have been studies done that over 90% of probiotics don't contain the probiotics in them anyway. Wow. So I'm personally more of a fan of prebiotics. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually encourage people to eat more prebiotics because prebiotics essentially feed your good bacteria. So you're not then being selective with which bacteria you're taking into your gut. That way you're feeding all your bacteria, you're creating a far better diversity of good bacteria, as well as more of a balance. So I personally am a fan of the prebiotic over the probiotic. Uh, that said, taking a probiotic and just varying the probiotics every month or so, mm -hmm. it's not a bad option. Um, there are actual, uh, when we talk about fiber, I was speaking about that earlier, the, the fiber gets converted into something called short chain fatty acids. You can actually take that as a supplement. Oh. So I think that's not, not a bad option mm -hmm. uh, to consume short chain fatty acids. Uh, and then outside of the gut, but just general health, uh, depending on your diet, consuming a good multivitamin. Um, I'm a big fan of digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. I think enzymes play a big role in gut health. Uh, the quality of the food, the kind of food that we eat. Uh, I personally take digestive enzymes on a daily basis. So those are some of the basic supplements that you can consider uh, when talking about general health as well as gut health. Oh, yeah. Now, Mary and I were talking, uh, we're having a little debate about our weight loss drugs. I'm going to have you ask the question. Sure. What are your thoughts on uh, Ozempic and Manjaro? I'm a big fan, personally. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. But what yeah. would you say? I, I, I know that I've seen something go viral recently yeah. about Ozempic face, which is yes. affecting certain celebrities. Uh, so there are risks. Yeah. So tell yeah. me why. No, you're there are risks. And I think, um, let me tell you why I'm a fan. I've been in practice for 24 years and I've seen what obesity does to people. Right? I see the impact that obesity has and everybody knows what they need to do to lose weight. You, you, ask, you ask 100 people what they need to do to lose weight, they know that they need to eat less and they need to exercise more. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Why are they not doing it? Frankly, they, sh they, should, they know what they should be doing and they're not doing it. Right? In 24 years, it's the first time I've seen a drug that actually helps people to lose weight. Now, yes, we can argue the fact that we should be exercising self-control. Well, again, in 24 years, I haven't been, seen many people be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to consider the the, the health fact, the, the diseases associated with obesity, the list is extensive. 
in my opinion, the risks associated with taking a drug that's going to get me to a normal weight are far less than the actual risks associated, associated with being obese. Okay. That is my, my perspective. Now getting to um, the side effects, I tell all of my patients, you can do Monjaro, you can do Ozempic badly and you can do it well. I think you can do it badly by just going out to the pharmacy, injecting yourself, increasing the dosages and, and not doing the necessary things to ensure that you minimize those effects. In our clinic, I'm not the one that specializes with this, but it's, uh, we have a doctor that does this. We do a thorough blood test. We do a thyroid ultrasound. We do an abdominal ultrasound. We monitor the patients very carefully. We insist on weight bearing exercise. We insist on the right nutrients to make sure that we support them. And those side effects, we hardly ever see in our clinic. Wow. So and, uh, I am a fan based on how you do it. Got it. And are, are these, do they have a direct impact on your gut health though, the, these kind of drugs? Gut health? Yes. Yeah, well they can. One of the things they do is they do slow down gut motility. Okay. That is one of the, one of the, the side effects is gut motility and we know that that's an important aspect. Mm -hmm. So again, one of the things you should be doing on a regular basis is ensuring that you're taking the digestive enzymes, taking those things that ensure that you encourage more motility. That's just one of the things uh, that it can have an impact on. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely got, you know, you're quite passionate about it. Actually, before we say goodbye, I want to know, Mary, what you think about Ozempic. Initially, I kind of was against it, but I kind of signed with him now, definitely. So, uh, I mean, like anything, I honestly believe that you can abuse anything and everything. And I think that's where the problem lies. It isn't really about what we take. It's about how we abuse what we take. So um, there's so many people out there who are obese and have taken it and have successfully lost weight. And there are people who aren't obese and are taking it and have lost the weight, but to at what cost? So really, it's just really trying to understand the difference between what to use, when to use it, instead of abusing it. But at the end of the day, the best way to do it is naturally self-discipline, eating right and an exercise. I would always tell a person to do that first. Amazing. Absolutely. Sean, thank you so much for being with us on DXD today. Thank and you. before we say goodbye to you, Mary Nimi has a little something for you. Yeah, surprise, Mary. Uh, it's called DXB in 60. Okay. We're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. I'm going to ask you as many questions as possible. We just want to find out more about you. Sure. Okay, are you ready? Ready. Here we go. Three, two, one. If you weren't a gut specialist, what would you be doing? A sleep specialist. Okay, well, uh, your motto in life and in work? Never give up. Mm -hmm. uh, a superpower you wish you had? Ply. Mm -hmm. Your first job? Working a law firm. Okay, wow. Your favorite ingredient or your favorite superfood? Moringa. Mm -hmm. And your go-to restaurant in Dubai? That's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zuma. Okay, your favorite recipe for gut healing? Um, bro bone broth. Okay, if you could hang out with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite podcast at the moment? Diary of a CEO, Stephen mm -hmm. Barlett. He's amazing. And why, why Dubai? I grew up here, it's been my home. Uh, it's a place that I feel the most safe. I built my businesses here. It's thriving. The community is amazing. And um, I, I couldn't picture myself anywhere else. Oh, well, we're happy to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you for so having me. much, Mary, for your time. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for being a fantastic guest co-host. Thank you. And Doc, thanks for all the brilliant advice. Hope to have you both here in the studio again. Well, coming up, we've got Gaia closing the night. And trust me, I've seen the rehearsals. You do not want to miss this.